Alrighty, now that I realized that I had, um, the last recording didn't record the way I wanted, guys, welcome back to episode 2 of How to Play Vanguard V series deck building. So guys, I am going to start this video off by stating that this is very similar to Black Moon Dragon's How to Play Vanguard series, but I figured with the announcement of, of the V series right around the corner, literally less than a month away now, the first trial decks are coming out, I want to help prepare you guys on how to build your deck. Now, as I've stated in the prior video I tried recording but failed, I haven't used Photoshop in a very, very long time. Since high school. I didn't use it in college because I really I, I tried to avoid as many classes that required Photoshop as possible, and I just completely skipped it. So with that being said, there's you're gonna see a lot of things, there's a lot of mistakes in this chart uh, or in this video that I realize, but I have yet to go back and decide because this video is taking way too long to make and I want to just give this to you guys. You can tell me what you think, what I should do better in the future. This video is for people that are new entering to the Vanguard series or have been out of it for a long time and want to hop back into the Vanguard V series. So without further ado, welcome to deck building. So let's start off with the basics. And the things to think about when you're getting into the basics are your clan. There's a lot of clans. There's over 24 main clans, or 25. I lost count. And they're not all listed there. At least I don't think they are. Let's see. 3 by 8. There's 24. So yeah, all the main clans are there. All 24. But clan, your clan isn't the first thing. Being that there's only four clans being released with the first booster box and two being re released with the first trial decks, you also should probably think about your price of everything. How much money is your deck going to cost? And that weighs on how heavily you want to play. Are you going to be in the standard? Are you going to be in premium? Are you going to be a meta deck? Are you just going to be, haha, I'm here, type of funny guy? Are you just going to spend $20 on the game and call it good? Those are all things you need to think about. And weigh options over which I'm not going to cover too much in this video that's going to be in the next video is breakdown of clans and their average deck prices in the old game in the new game we really don't know what's going to be costing and the last thing you need to think about is creativity so there's two forms in the current Vanguard uh, game there is the meta which is where you play a cookie cutter deck that means People have gone, play tested with every card, and have built the best deck that can break the most logic. Creativity in this game is key, because if you can be a, if you can build a creative deck that works well, you'll catch people off. There is a downside to the creative aspect of the game. Once you have played at a Bushiro sanctioned tournament where your deck list is shown and you have won. That means now everyone will either be copying your deck or will know how to beat your deck in the future. So playing meta means you have to rely on draws and skill a bit more than your creativity, which should throw your opponent off if you're lucky. Now, like I said earlier, I have messed things up, but we're going to go over the deck breakdown. I forgot to title this chart. I know. I see it. Let's just get into this. So, the number of cards in a deck are simple. First off, each, deck's, each deck has about 17 grade zeros. This number can fluctuate as all these numbers, but this is your starter plus your, uh, your play sets of your four triggers, which I will be going over after. You also have grade ones, which you have 13 or 12, depending on the deck. I like to fluctuate between the two, personal opinion. Grade twos, you also have 12 or 13, depending on the prior. So this is the order. So if you have 13, then 12. Some people do 14 and 11, and 11 and 14. I like this number. It's just more consistent with how the game works. And lastly, in the grade three slot, you have eight. So normally, this number doesn't fluctuate too much. But all this is dependent on the person. Some people run 21 or uh, 20 grade zeros and substitute in stuff for the grade twos and zeros because their starter is really good or there's a better grade zero to run in the deck. You can only run a total of 16 triggers which is why this is the standard number. You could also run less grade threes. I have a great nature deck that runs off of um, six 
grade threes because it just has so much search and draw power i don't need any more than six grade threes to get the cards i need so i have room to fill in more slots and that's sort of how the deck breakdown works um, each deck is different and unique it's up to you to decide how you're going to build it what cards you want to build in normally i stick to this number for grade twos and this number for grade ones just because this it used to be really cookie cutter on how i set up but we'll go over that in a little bit later on moving along to the triggers oh and technically now i forgot this but in the new standard you have imaginary gifts which from what i understand you can have up to eight gifts in your gift zone or the g zone and um technically if you're playing premium which we don't cover right now you can have up to 16 grade fours or stride units or g guards that type of number like i said i haven't entirely decided when i want to cover premium i might cover it after the release of new stuff but that's up for you guys to decide if i cover it or not moving along because there's a lot here to talk about um what can you do with this knowledge well it's very simple you can edit how you like so you can make the deck remove add cards on how you like you can be creative as i stated earlier creativity is really huge to surprising opponents and lastly you can study other decks and learn how to beat them that is just how vanguard works you study you create you build so let's move along into the big thing grade zeros so a lot of grade zeros over time uh, started off with Conroe and have evolved over time. And some of these units are actually from the very first s editions of the grade zeros. So these are what you call starters. So old starters like this Conroe over here have this thing called when a cargo unit rides it, you may pay the cost if you do uh, move it to call this card to a rearguard circle. This was later changed to the ability Forerunner it's important because it's how the game dictates these cards dictate how they work other cards like godhawk up here has a skill when it's written you look at for certain cards and i just threw this beastie white tiger down because i needed another card um but it has the same skill as conroe so there's really no difference here they just changed this long winded sentence into forerunner and godhawk's a bit different so these are what your in general starters look like. They'll have lengthy paragraphs. I don't know what the actual new starters will have. Uh, I think they're just when a unit rides, you draw a card. But we don't know what the future is going to hold. So this is why I have these cards. And honestly, I forgot to use new cards when I was making this. So yeah, that's what we have. Moving along to the next stuff. There's other forms of grade zeros that aren't starters. Like I was talking about. You could have more. You have these two. So these are start these are units that you run in your deck when you're just looking for support. So this one has the ability to retire itself and stand your grade two or less vanguard if the when the when it attacks and the attack didn't hit. I run four of these in my Nova Grappler deck, and almost all of them just because it's powerful. It allows things to happen. Whereas this grade zero, when it's placed on the guard circle at the end of battle, you may move it to soul. So these are two very important cards to some builds, and they're powerful. Moving along, we have the heal triggers, as you can see here. So this is what an old heal trigger looked like. This is what a newer version of the heal trigger liked, and only had was in some clans. And in the last generation, this is what old heal triggers looked like, or what the what we got for heal triggers so heal triggers as always have like all cards over time have evolved and gained skills unfortunately in the new v series we're gonna re be reverting back to something similar to this now i should state that in the v series heal triggers have a 20k shield and you may only have four of these types of cards in your deck so you can have any four heal triggers from your clan but you're only allowed a max number of four even if they have different names but uh, when considering if at all in V series we ever get a unit with a skill for a heal trigger, it might be good to consider putting into deck. Moving along, critical sort of follow the same um, thing where they had skills, they were blank, and in the G series, the last one, we had cookie cutter skills, 
which means this is essentially the skill. You do this, you get this, end result is this. That was all. It required a specific grade three, and we had a lot of heal triggers or critical triggers that did things like add, add a soul draw card or add a soul gain 3k. So criticals have a 15k shield in V series, and you're probably going to end up running normally eight of these cards because stands have been removed from the game and replaced for front trigger. So unless your clan has a front trigger, you're going to basically be stuck with this. So moving right along, we also have draw triggers, which again, we had vanilla draws and add a soul 3k. Um, we, I don't think we got anything too special in G for draw trigger or in any other arc. It was just normally add a soul, give 3k, sort of their shtick. I liked it. And now we're getting a, now we're getting something very special for draw triggers. So draw triggers have this 15k shield. And when V-Series was announced, or 5k, 5k shield, and when V-Series was announced, their trigger got buffed, but their shield didn't. And the reason for that would be because of this new feature, which will definitely modify how you build a deck. New draw triggers. They are perfect guards. These used to be a grade 1, and essentially what they do is when you place them on guard circle, you may discard one card to, and then choose a unit. And that unit cannot be hit until end of battle. Meaning that if your opponent attacked with a very powerful rear guard or vanguard, you could guard your vanguard and or rear guard and stop the attack. In, in the G series, they turned most perfect guards into vanguard only targets. And then in the new series, they're like, oh, well, let's reduce the grade one slot and give this. There are some problems with this. In, the, in premium, you're probably not going to see this as much because of a unit called Silent Tom. When you're playing an Oracle Think Tank deck, Silent Tom prevents you from guarding with grade zeros, which means this. Grading is very important. So that's something to keep in mind, but this will take up one of your... This will take up your draw trigger slot more than likely, being that draw, draw triggers I've seen are only this and have no skill. So keep that in mind that draw triggers are meant to be your perfect guards in the future. All right, we're going to move along to the next thing, grade ones, which this was poorly edited. So grade ones in the old format used to be perfect guards. Look like this. If you notice from the last side, this character is the exact same as the other draw trigger. Same name and everything, same skill. Just this got a grade zero and a draw trigger to it. That's all. But your grid zeros are also are meant to help out with your main part of your subclan, whether it be Messiahs or Nurikam, Nubatamas, um, Binding. These are what you call your main deck fillers. They help you fill out your deck and support your vanguard. That is very important. There is one other type of grid one, which normally or used to fill out some slots and will probably come back to being fill out but they're called your beat sticks and vanillas. So your, your, your beat sticks are things that gain power from something. They're sort of there and they're not a detrimental loss to your formation. If you, um, if they're retired or have to be gone and vanillas are cards without skills, but they have an in generally high, pa higher power than most. As you can see, we have a seven K eight K and nine K. Him being the strongest power-wise, but he has no skill to buff him. Whereas these cards, if something's retired in at a certain point, they gain either 10k or 5k power. That's your standard beat stick in vanilla. And this vanilla rule applies for grade 2s as well, which is our next subject, which I forgot to edit in stuff. So grade 2s and their uses, well, their main uses are being the main support for your front row. So you'll see a lot of grade 2s and 3s in the front row. They provide extra guard power after being called, meaning they have the intercept ability, which when your opponent attacks, you may choose a rear guard if it's not being attacked and move it to the guard circle. So as long as it's in your front row and your support, they also support your other skills, very similar to your, um, grade ones and they provide extra attack. So if you don't know in the front row, your rear guards can attack. 
And they do take up a main part of your deck, as you can see here. They take up almost a good chunk of it. At least as much as the grade 3s, if not more, in grade 1s. Again, this deck is based off of the 17, 13, 12, and 8. So yeah, it it's very... This this is a very helpful chart, I swear. But their, their main main supporting grade twos are stuff like this things that have useful skills this allows you to call certain units this allows you to retire certain units these are your normal main grade twos that you want to get out there are also double rares as you can see so sometimes depending on a card's use the higher the rarity it does it could mean the better that's not entirely true all the time there are a lot of single rares and commons that are really powerful as well i'm just unfortunately this is a bad example and it's what I had. But, yeah, these are your main grade twos for uh, Royal Pouting and Kagero. This is something you're going to run three to four of in every one of your decks. Until something else is made to replace them. And then you have your grade two beat sticks. Again, very similar. They do specific things where they gain power. They have a specific still. But it's not a huge loss when they're retired. And again, unfortunately, bad example, but they are lower rarity, showing that they aren't necessarily worse or better than a higher rare card, but at the same time, their skills aren't as useful. As this is a common and this is a single rare, there's not a lot of new. This card is good, don't get me wrong. For a soul char or for a counter blast, you can soul charge and gain 5k, whereas this one is a counter blast for something specific to happen. I forget, I knew it like three days ago when I added it in. With that being stated, let's move on to the next section. Grade threes. So, grade threes, what are their main they're the main grade that you eventually write to and are stuck with in the new standard. They have twin drive, which allows you to do two drive checks, which I will cover in the next video, which is more about rules and stuff. Uh, they have some of the highest power in the game. And they also can have gift marks. This is a SL card. This is your protect card. And this is your force card. So each do unique things with their gift marks. But as you can see, they all have the twin drive ability. And they all are main units. They're the main boss units. This is in the trial deck. This is from the booster with a main restand skill. This is a draw power skill. It's all unique. So let's move along to your force units. The force mark is represented by blue. It is on Dragonic Overlord and Alfred Early. The force mark states when you ride your vanguard, as all force marks are active, that's how they activate, you may choose a vanguard or rearguard slot and give that slot 10k during your turn. And if you have two marks on there, obviously 20k. So this is just what this mark looks like, and it's on these two units. Um, there's a whole list of clans, which I will try to remember to put at the front of the next video. But that's how you determine these units' um, power uh, or abilities. And then they have their own unique skills, which makes them, again, boss units. Moving right along, we have your Protect Grade 3s, which Protect states when this unit rides on your Vanguard slot you may add a protect gift to hand. The protect gift acts as a perfect guard when placed on guard circle. So meaning when it's placed there, you discard a card, it's a free perfect guard. It allows you to have more than four sentinels in hand, which I think is gonna be huge against certain decks that restrict guarding because it's not a grade, it's a gradeless card. So if it says you can't guard with grade zeros or higher or um, grade ones or less it doesn't count because it doesn't have a grade it's just a card again this is your main boss something to note about the prior uh clans is the the force clans seem to be a 13k base even though you can't see it on dragonic overlord but whereas the protect and you'll soon see the excel clans only have 12k bases so that's something interesting to think about, and I have a video planned for that later this week, maybe. But lastly, I want to cover the Excel Grade 3s. So these are going to be for your decks with continuous attack, and they specialize in offense. 
What does the Excel mark do? Well, when you when this Vanguard rides your Vanguard circle, you may put an additional gift mark down on the field. Gift mark. This gift mark does not count as a unit, so it cannot be targeted. What this does is it allows you to add an extra Vanguard circle in your front row. It's also a unit that can't be protected. It can't be boosted, but it gets a 10k during your turn. And you can, if you ride multiple times, so if you ride two, and you get two marks, you put one on the left and one on the right, and you go back and forth until you're out of marks. So this is huge, because you can get a total if you ha run eight great threes with eight, with all Excel gift marks, you can get an additional eight rear guards with skills that allow you to call to them and so much more you get an additional eight power so that is just broken because that gives you 11 rear guard attacks but i don't think you'll ever get to that point you would have to really have a long game but yeah those are the overall basics to deck building um the main thing that you guys should focus on is how your deck is structured with how many units and in the next episode i'm gonna go over some of uh, key points but it this is kind of hard because there's nothing currently for me to feasibly show you and i don't know necessarily know all the rules myself i only know what's been announced so yeah um this isn't a perfect video on how to play vanguard v but i wanted to bring it there and show you guys how to build the deck and i hopefully you guys learned something I feel like I did an okay job explaining it. You guys can let me know down in the comments below. And go ahead and rip me apart for my editing on Photoshop. But until next time, guys, I've been the Silver Wolf. I'll see you all later. Peace.